Hey guys, so I'm just doing a quick recording of creating a work order in field service. Uh, I'll probably be recording more videos on more field service related topics uh, later, but for now let's just look at how to create a new work order. So to go to work order, we can just go to work orders and then we can click new. And when we're creating a new work order, we have to always pick a service account. So work orders are kind of sort of unlike uh, cases, I guess. Well, actually cases, I think you need a, yeah, you need a customer uh, contact with, with case as well, but it could be, it could be a contact, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be an account. Um, but with work orders, it has to be uh, an account. You can't have a, a work order come in from a contact. Um, it's also makes it so that it's not necessarily going to fit, for instance, a municipal 311 scenario um, in and of itself. You, you would need a stub account or an account that represents the city government or something along those lines. Um, if, for instance, field service was being used to service a municipality. So this is really assuming that we've got um, a private company that is going and sending out field service agents to like do, you know, service calls in the field for their customers. You know, customer buys a furnace or, a, uh, you know, a water heater or a coffee machine or whatever it is, and you're sending out people to, to service uh, that equipment on site. So we can choose a service account, say, I've just, I just picked one randomly. Actually, Contoso Hydro, maybe let's pick a different one. There's so many in the system, I'm gonna go for, I think I saw fourth coffee or something. There we go. Apparently I don't know how to spell four. So fourth copy. Um, the system status defaults to open unscheduled. So this system status is an interesting one and we might dig into this a little bit deeper. This is not the state nor the status reason um, that come out of the box with D365 on every entity, right? So it's not the status uh, or the status reason. Status is still just active as you can see down here, right? System status is a custom option set for whatever reason. I'm not sure why they didn't just use, uh, you know, status reason, because they could have active and inactive and you can have status reasons. <laughs> um, so why they use the system status instead is beyond me. There might've been some technical reason or they might just have not thought it through. But in any event, this is essentially the equivalent of status reason, right? Um, so it, it, it defaults to open unscheduled. You can add more system statuses, um, but there's all kinds of workflows and automated stuff that doesn't work if you change these system statuses. So it's not recommended that you do so. Then you've got sub status, which is sort of like, it's almost like system status is the replacement for status and then sub status is your status reason, right? It's basically a detailed, uh, a more detailed uh, you know, status that really indicates um, the reason or, or the, the exact state that the work order is in um, without you know mucking around with the pre-built set of system statuses. So open unscheduled, maybe it's building estimate, something like that. We'll say building estimate, okay? Then you choose a work order type, right? So again, these are manageable. Um, you, you essentially you create the different work order types. So I'm going to say uh, diagnosis and repair. And the work order type essentially is mostly used. I mean, it's its own delimiter, right? It, you can see that it there, you know, what the work item work order type is. So it's descriptive, um, but also it sets the price list. Okay. Then there's incident. Now you don't need an incident on a work order, but so the, the incident type is, is optional. But if we pick an incident, an incident type, um, 
let's say replace spoken part. Okay, whether or not that's applicable to, you know, fourth coffee. Uh, but the point is that, you know, you have the incident type. The incident type actually does a lot more for the work order than the work order type. Why incident type and work order type need to be different, I'm not exactly sure. I think work order type is more about, you know, prices, right? It sets the price list. It's more a question of, uh, 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 categorization in that sense, whereas the primary incident type is mostly used to pre-populate um, certain things. But the interesting thing is that incident type does pre-populate services, which is about uh, the invoice and it's about line items on the on the the bill. Um, whereas work order type sets the price list. So again, another interesting design decision, um, but. That's what primary incident type is. If you don't choose that, nothing gets pre-populated on the work order. So we'll save this for now. When we save that, the incident type is going to pre-populate products, services, and service tasks. So we've got products. In this case, there are no products. Services. Uh, and service tasks. Now, actually, none have been populated so far, so it may just be a question of needing to refresh, or I may have picked a bad incident type that doesn't specify that. There we go. Okay, so you just I just had to refresh a few times. So the, the list of uh, products, in this case, there may be no products, services, See, get an example. No, no services. So in this case, all all that incident type pre-populates is service tasks. Um, I wonder if I pick a, a different example. It's interesting that replace broken part doesn't have any services, but there you have it. It's out of the box uh, example data. So services, if there were any services, are essentially line items on the invoice, right? They have prices associated with them. Products, same thing, are, are products that are associated to that work order. Um, and actually, if I go back, I've got, I think I've got another example here that I created that does have services, doesn't have products, but it does have services at least, right? So you can see that we have uh, total amounts, right? Estimate total amounts. So these are, are things that we expect to bill to the customer, whereas service tasks, service tasks are more just a checklist of to-dos for the field servant field service agent so that they when they go on site they can go down the sequence of steps okay first i need to read the diagnostic codes that'll probably take 30 minutes and i have to diagnose the issue will take 45 minutes then i need to perform the repair which we're estimating is going to take an hour and then we test and validate and we estimate that that'll take 15 minutes right so this lets us estimate it's about how long the work order is expected to take um as well as um, what the checklist of, of tasks are to perform. Now, work orders also have an address. That address gets automatically populated. I did not fill this in, um, but it gets automatically populated by the address of the account, right? So the account, the service account that I chose for the work order uh, populated this address here. The location is the geo, uh, geo coordinates, I should say, that are associated to that address, right? So where is this address in the world? And that's gonna be used for things like navigation and calculating the distance um, from the field service resources, the bookable resources current location to the location of the job, right? And then you've got a record log um, and then related items um, which is where you'd access things like service bookings um, as well as other kind of odds and ends as well. Okay, and then when it comes to the details of the work order, you have settings. So that lets you um, choose whether or not the work location is on site or it could be location agnostic, i.e. remote, or it could be at a facility, um, as well as other details of the work order, the service territory that it's in, um, who reported it, uh, who the support contact is, its priority, 
right? So you, there are no priorities um, that are specified in the system. You, you have to create those. So you create, you know, it's a lookup. So you could create a bunch of priorities like high, medium, low, and then you'd respond to those priorities in different ways. So for instance, for reporting, you might have a view that only shows high priority um, service cases or that sorts them by priority. Or you might have notifications um, on a regular basis for high priority items, so on and so forth. Then you can also promise the client a particular time. So we will arrive some sometime between, you know, let's say, at, you know, today is November 3rd, election day. So to, <laughs> tomorrow, um, sometime between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Okay, so this is the time that we're promising um, the client that will, will appear. Okay, and then we have things like, uh, like parent work order. So work orders can have parent work orders that they can be related to. An associated agreement, which can be the topic for a future uh, video, as well as opportunities, uh, an opportunity or a case, right? So a work order can result from a case or from an opportunity. So that's essentially creating um, a work order. Um, so that, that's basically the, the, what I wanted to cover in this video. But in addition to that, I guess the other thing that we can look at is uh, the difference between work order types and incident types. So if I look at the work order type, it's pretty straightforward. It's really just a name. Whether or not we need an incident, if you select, so for certain work order types, if you choose incident required, yes, then when you choose that work order type as the work order type for a new work order that you're creating, it'll force you to have an associated um, incident type. And then whether or not it's taxable and the price list. That's pretty much what a work order type is. Whereas the incident type, if we look at the incident type, again, this is all, you know, these are all configuration data that gets set up in the system, right? So you can see right here, we have work order types and incident types over here, right? So when we're looking at incident type, it's just a name really. And then you have related things like related products, related services and related service tasks, right? So remember that this incident type didn't populate products or services on the work order um, that's because there are none specified for this incident type, just service tasks, right? So we can add new service tasks and manage existing service tasks and so on and so forth. Um, and then we just have general details about the incident type, like its estimated duration um, and so on and so forth. And whether or not to copy those items to the agreement. And this basically should always be, uh, um, yes, I'm not sure why it wouldn't be. Um, remember, this isn't the work order, this is the agreement, but I, I would, I, I think there would be some circumstances where you wouldn't want those items copied, but nine times out of 10, you probably would want them copied to the agreement. And we'll talk about agreements in a future, a future video. So um, thanks for watching and be sure to reach out uh, if you have any questions. Thanks, thanks guys, bye.